Today is the grand finale of our series. Allow me to reintroduce myself. Genesis 32, 22. This left Jacob all alone in the camp, and a man came and wrestled with him until the dawn began to break. When the man saw that he would not win in the match, he touched Jacob's hip and wrenched it out of its socket then the man said, let me go for the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. What's your name, the man asked. He replied, Jacob. Your name will no longer be Jacob, the man told him. From now on. You will be called Israel because you have fought with God and with men and have won. I want to speak to you this morning from the subject, all my life I had to fight. In the 1985 critically acclaimed film, The Color Purple, Sophia tells Seely, all my life I had to fight. I had to fight my daddy, I had to fight my brothers, I had to fight my cousins and my uncles, but I never thought I'd have to fight in my own house. I love Harpo, God knows I do, but I'll kill him dead before I let him beat me. This sentiment is analogous to the life of Jacob. He's been fighting since birth. While the fight has presented itself in multiple manifestations, he's ultimately fighting for his name. Your name denotes your character, your identity, what you stand for. A good name is to be protected from being demeaned or denigrated. Proverbs 22 and 1 says, a good name is more desirable than great riches to be esteemed better than silver or gold. Biblical names hold great significance. Adam means man. Abram means high father. Abraham means the father of many nations. God promises Abraham, I'm going to make your name great. Moses means to be drawn out. While he was drawn out of an ark of bulrushes, his assignment, his destiny, is to draw the children of Israel out of Egypt to the promised land. Joshua means Yahweh is salvation. Joshua means to bring in. As a result, Moses brings out, but it's Joshua who brings in. Isaac and Rebekah are the parents of Jacob. They saw their son at birth clinging to the heels of his brother Esau, and subsequently they named him Jacob, heel grabber or trickster. They used one moment to label him for a lifetime. <sighs> Look at your family and before you put the burden of who they are and what they've become solely on them, you got to pause and ask yourself, what did I name them? <sighs> if your husband isn't all that you desire, instead of telling him what he's not and degrading him in front of others, first acknowledge you picked him and he's a reflection of your intelligence. Second, if you start telling him what he is, he will rise into what he can become. Uh, the Bible says that Adam named Eve. 
I make it a point to make sure my wife is filled with positive words of affirmation. I affirm her as a woman, as a wife, as a mother, as an executive. Yeah, I, I affirm her as the brilliance behind the Rock Church. I affirm my children. I make it a point to affirm Brooklyn, not just for her external appearance, but for her internal attributes. I affirm my son. I tell him he's courageous. I tell him that he's strong. I tell him that he's going to be a better man than me. Jacob's struggle is between how he's been defined by man versus how he's defined by God. Here's where all of us find ourselves in a struggle between how man defines us versus how God defines us. Man defines you naturally. God defines you spiritually. Man names you in the present. God names you based upon your future. Man names you based upon what you've been. God names you based upon what you will become. God allows Jacob to go on a journey to reveal his real identity. Yeah, God allows you to go through trials not to kill you, but he sends trials to reveal you. Jacob went from struggle at birth to deceiving his brother and father based on the advice of his mother. From fleeing from his brother to resting at the rock in the wilderness. Yeah, yeah, he goes from being deceived by Laban and serving him for 20 years and it is here. After serving Laban for 20 years that he's determined enough is enough. He doesn't know this, but he's on the edge of a breakthrough. He doesn't know it, but he's on the precipice of a miracle. Everything he went through is about to make sense. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I want to talk to somebody who's watching online and you've gone through an arduous first half of 2021. I decree everything you're going through is about to make sense. God's about to shift some stuff. You're about to discover another level inside of you. I need you to type in the chat, I'm on the edge. Yeah, I decree and declare I'm on the edge of a breakthrough. This is my last day being this broke. This is my last day being this dejected. This is my last day being this depressed. Take a picture of me because this is my before. When I come out after this, you won't even be able to recognize me. All my life, I had to fight for I reckon that the suffering of the present in time will not be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities fight for your name fight for your family fight for your reputation fight for your character fight for your identity all my life I had to fight <sighs> as we penetrate the pericope of our text what we'll discover is that there are three steps to reintroduction the first is repentance the text says Genesis 32 and four, he told them, give this message to my master Esau, humble greetings from your servant Jacob. Are you catching this? Until now, I have been living with Uncle Laban. Genesis 32 and 9 says, Then Jacob prayed, O God of my grandfather Abraham and God of my father Isaac. Oh, Lord, you told me return to your own land and to your relatives. And you promised me I will treat you kindly. I am not worthy of all the unfailing love and faithfulness you have shown to me, your servant. The first step to reintroduction is repentance. Jacob's sin caused him to run, to stay with Laban for 20 years, to be manipulated out of a wife, to be manipulated out of wages 10 times. Learn from Jacob. Sin will turn you into a fugitive. <sighs> Sin, the old folks used to say, will take you further than you want it to go. It will make you stay longer than you want it to stay. And ultimately, you will have to pay more than you intended to pay. Jacob turns away from the place he ran to as a result of his sin. And he turns towards the place God wants him to be. Did you catch it? He, he does a 180 degree turn from where he's run to based on sin and he returns to where God wants him to be. It's not repentance if there's no turn involved. 
Uh, every, every apology should be accompanied by behavior shifts. It's not repentance if it doesn't come with a term. When I really repent, my actions will punctuate my words. If I repent for fornication, I can't sleep with you no more. If I put myself in a position to fall, then I can't put myself in that position anymore. We can't hang out late at night thinking that nothing's going to happen. Quit playing. I'm too grown and I'm too sexual. Don't play with me. If we hang out after hours, it's going to be a lot of touching and agreeing. Yeah, the devil is a liar. Repentance must be accompanied by a behavior change. When I repent for my anger, I have to get some accountability to help me keep my anger in check. Godly sorrow worketh repentance. Second Chronicles says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and will pray and will seek my face and will turn from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Repentance requires humility. Oh, Jesus. The Bible says pride goes before destruction. How many marriages have been destroyed based on pride? How many careers have been destroyed based on pride? How many businesses have fallen to the ground based upon pride? How many relationships have come to a conclusion based on pride? When you have the spirit of God, you will repent for your reaction even when they started. You missed what I just said. Last week I told you that you have to release the fallacy of fairness, that, that, that life ain't fair. Fair. When you have the spirit of God, you will forgive people who never apologize to you. When you have the spirit of God, you will hug people who you know talk about you behind your back. I just got a text message. The Bible says, but I say unto you, yeah, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for those who despitefully use you and persecute you that you may be the children of God. I can't control anybody but me. And when I repent, it puts me back in alignment with God and his will for my life. The devil tries to keep you in prison through secrecy and seclusion. But God says, if you confess your sins, yeah, he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. God, I'm coming to you broken, a broken spirit and a contrite heart. He will not despise. God, I'm a trip. Help me. God, I don't like my attitude. Help me. God, I'm addicted to alcohol, weed and pornography. Help me. God, I'm with somebody who's good to me, but they ain't good for me. Help me. If you're serious about getting delivered, you got to call it out. If you're serious about being set free, you got to repent. Have mercy on me, O oh God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity for, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Here's your part. Create in me a clean heart O God and renew a right spirit within me cast me not away from your presence and take not thy holy spirit from me nobody ever quotes 12 restore repentance leads to restoration restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with your free spirit when you repent you can be restored after you repent, you got to remember what God promised you. Genesis 32 and 12 says, but you promised me. Yeah, I will surely treat you kindly and I will multiply your descendants until they become as numerous as the sands along the seashore. Too many to count. Remember that God originally promised Abraham in Genesis 12. He said, I'll make you a great nation. He says, I will bless you and make you famous and you will be a blessing to other people. Recognize that God doesn't bless you to floss. God doesn't bless you to stunt. God blesses you to be a blessing. He says, I will bless those who bless you. Uh, somebody type in the chat. You better be nice to me until you do right by me. Yeah. Uh, uh, nothing you touch will prosper. I don't know why we in the color purple bag. I had to throw that one in. Yeah. God says, I will bless those who 
bless you and I will curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families of the earth will be blessed through you. Somebody needs to type in the chat. I receive it. All the families of the earth will be blessed through you. See, you're so preoccupied with God getting a blessing to you. You don't recognize that God's trying to get a blessing through you. Yeah, I want to be the plug. You're looking for a plug. I want to be the plug. You're looking for a hookup. I am the hookup. The, the, the text says in Genesis 26 and 2, then the Lord appeared to Isaac and said, do not go down to Egypt, but do as I tell you. Live here as a foreigner in this land and I will be with you and I'm going to bless you. I hereby confirm that I will give all these lands to you and your descendants just as I promised to Abraham. Y'all missed your shout. <sighs> it's popular to preach about generational curses, but I want to hear somebody preach about generational blessings. Yeah, he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He says, I hereby confirm that I will give all these lands to you and your descendants just as I solemnly promised Abraham, your father. I will cause your descendants to become as numerous as the stars of the sky, and I will give them all these lands. And through your descendants, somebody type in the chat, my children are blessed. Through all your descendants, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. I will do this because Abraham, listen to me and obey all my requirements commands decrees and instructions you know what my prayer is as a parent my prayer is as a parent that I will set my children up to win battles that I struggled in <sighs> uh, my, my, my prayer as a parent is that I will give my children a head start in areas where I didn't have one yeah, the text says in Genesis 28 and 13, at the top of the stairway, y'all remember when he rested at the rock? Y'all not catching it. He made a promise to Abraham. He reiterated the promise to Isaac. And then when Jacob was resting at the rock, when Jacob was tired of being on the run, God spoke to him and said, I am the Lord, the God of your grandfather, Abraham, the God of your father, Isaac. The ground you were lying on belongs to you, and I'm giving it to you and your descendants. Your descendants will be as numerous as the dust of the earth. They will spread out in all directions to the east and the west, to the north and the south. And all the families of the earth will be blessed through you and your descendants. What's more, I'm with you. <sighs> I want to talk to somebody who's walking into a job interview. God told me to drop off three words. I'm with you. I want to preach to somebody who's in a lonely place. God told me to tell you I'm with you. I want to talk to somebody who's dealing with depression. God told me to tell you I'm with you. I want to talk to somebody who's in a place of confusion. God told me to tell you I'm with you. And if God be for me, if God before me, it's more than the world against me. When Jacob is low, God reminds him that I have a deal with you, that I cannot swear by anything greater, it says in Hebrews. So he swore by himself. God says when you start to forget, when you're suffering from spiritual amnesia, you need God to jog your memory. <sighs> Uh, uh, I get my son a haircut every other Saturday, but sometimes I can forget. So what I have to do is I have to set a reminder. Uh, God told me to tell you that you you dealing with spiritual amnesia and, and you need to set a reminder. Like if, you, if you're sick, you need to set a reminder that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities and that the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. If you're broke, you got to set a reminder that I was once young. Young, but now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. If you're dealing with anxiety, you got to set a reminder that the Bible says be anxious for nothing. If if fear is gripping you, you got to set a reminder that God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of love power and a sound mind. If you if you can't remember, then you need some friends who will remind you that you're the head and not the tail, that you're above only and not beneath. You got to set a reminder that you're more than a conqueror. You got to set a reminder that no weapon formed against me will be able to prosper. You got to set a reminder. I will not be afraid of the terror by night nor the arrow by day. You got to set a reminder. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom 
shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host shall encamp around about me, my heart will not fear. The war shall rise against me. In this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord. And that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You got to set a reminder. There are too many Christians who are living life with spiritual amnesia. The devil is distracting you. You got to set a reminder that God will keep me in perfect peace if my mind is stayed on him. I got to get out of here. When you're going to when you're going to reintroduce yourself, you have to repent. You have to remember and you got to learn how to reinvent yourself. Come here, Jacob. Just because you've been a trickster doesn't mean you got to stay a trickster. Ah, there's more to you. Stop playing. That, that, that's just the way that I am. No, you got to remix that. That's just the way I used to be. Well, well, you didn't change. You didn't switch it up. Well, that was the goal. The goal was not for us to remain the same. The goal was for us to grow and evolve. The only things, even dead things, change backwards. The goal is for me to grow forwards. You got to learn how to reinvent yourself. You aren't what you went through. Stop calling yourself that. You are more than a single mother. You are more than a divorcee. You are more than a widow. Stop defining yourself by what you've been. God can work on you and through you at the same time. I came to preach to imperfect people who are a living witness that God is working on me while he's working through me. Abram reinvented himself and became Abraham, the father of many nations. Noah was drunk, but he reinvented himself and God used him to build an ark. Isaac had a rocky marriage, but he was still used by God. Leah wasn't the most attractive woman, but she still produced. Job lost everything, but he reinvented himself and God blessed him with double. Moses 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 couldn't talk, but 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 he reinvented himself and he led the children of Israel out of Egypt out of bondage. Yeah, Rahab was a harlot. Rahab was a prostitute, but in a moment of faith she reinvented herself. Somebody type in the chat. This is my moment. You can either stay the same. You can stay addicted to average. You can keep meddling with mediocrity or you can make a decision. It's my season for reinvention. David was a murderer and an adulterer, but he still reinvented himself and became a man after God's own heart. Elijah was suicidal, but he managed to reinvent himself and still knew how to call down fire from heaven. Peter denied Christ three times but when the day of Pentecost was fully come he reinvented himself and became God's spokesperson Lazarus was dead but he reinvented himself and made a comeback somebody type in the chat it's comeback season yeah it's time for me to come back from everything that held me down it's time for me to come back from every negative mindset it's time for me to come back from every generational cycle it's time for me to come back from every mistake that I made it's come back season. Reinvent yourself. Take a different way home. Reinvent yourself. Go to a restaurant that you can't afford and just order dessert to see what affluent people live like. Reinvent yourself. Listen to new music from a new genre. Reinvent yourself. Visit a different city and see how other people live. Reinvent yourself. If you always shop at Walmart, try Target this time. Reinvent yourself. Let God reinvent you spiritually. Genesis 32, 24 says, and Jacob was left alone. Somebody type in the chat, leave me alone. Yeah, leave me alone. Leave me alone. You got too many distractions around you. Leave me alone. Put your phone down. Leave me alone. Uh, you, you respond to notifications. Leave me alone. You're a puppet to social media. You're a puppet to your cell phone. You, you don't need to just fast from food on Tuesdays. Every now and again, you need to fast from, from technology. Leave me alone. Yeah, yeah. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day. Jacob was left alone. Yeah, I need to get rid of distractions so I can focus on being who God designed me to be. Leave me alone. Oftentimes your isolation precedes your revelation. <sighs> God has to get me by myself so I can see myself. Most of us don't like to be alone because we have to listen to the voices we've tried to distract ourselves from. 
Yeah, when I'm alone, I got to deal with me. When I'm alone, I can't be a victim. When I'm alone, I can't blame anybody. When I'm alone, I have to assume responsibility. God has to get you by yourself so you can see yourself. God has to get you by yourself so he can make you over. Folks that were walking out of your life, you don't know it's a blessing in disguise. Stop fighting for people to stay who want to leave. Let them go. Jacob is now on the run from his brother. Yeah, he's on the run from his brother, but he doesn't realize that he's actually been running from himself the entire time. In this season, I got to deal with me. Yeah, I don't recognize what I see when I look in the mirror anymore. I, I don't recognize who I am any longer. I know the right words to say to impress you, but the truth is when I look on the inside, I don't know who I am. I know the game. I know when I come to church, I got to tell you that I'm blessed and highly favored, but the truth is I'm broken and I'm all alone. I spend so much time working on what's on the outside because I don't want you to see how broken I am on the inside. I smile to hide the hurt, the pain, and the abandonment. What you don't know is when I show up, I got my past behind me. I got the fact that my father rejected me. I, I got the fact that I was done wrong by Laban. I got the fact that I disrespected Leah because I loved Rachel. I, I, I got my opposition next to me. Yeah, I got opposition from my brother who wants to kill me. I got opposition from my father-in-law who wants to deceive me. And what you don't know is I got this personal issue on the inside of me that I can't shake. Yeah, despite what you think, despite how well I shout, despite how much I speak in tongues, people don't know that I'm wrestling with the issue when, when I would do good. It, it feels like evil is present with me always. And, and in the midst of all my pain, in the midst of all my suffering, I got my future in front of me, reminding me of what I can be. I, I got my future telling me, get up. I got my future telling me no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. I got my future telling me you're better than this. I got my future telling me after you've suffered a while, he will establish you, he will strengthen you, and he will make you perfect. I got my future telling me many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. When, when you see me, what you don't know is that there are five versions of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you get me in certain situations. You don't know what version of me you're going to get. Yeah, there's sometimes when opportunities come, but then my past shows up. There's sometimes when, 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 when I feel like I'm making progress, but then I got some external opposition that's trying to set me back. There's this thorn in my flesh that I'm connected to that you don't even know about. And I got my future. So when you ask me, how am I doing? It depends on which version of me you asked. Like, how are you today? Fine, bad, not so good. Uh, it, it's, it's multiple answers. I'm, I, I'm, I'm beyond bipolar at this juncture of my life. Paul said it like this. I'm troubled on every side. Yeah, but I'm not distressed. I'm perplexed, but I'm not in despair. I got to get myself back. Somebody type in the chat. I want me back. Yeah, I want me back. You got to learn how to wrestle with your opposition and say, I'm not running from you no more that I can't conquer it. If I don't confront it, you got to fight your opposition and declare that no weapon formed against me will be able to prosper. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. You got to look at your past and say, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things behind me and reaching for what's ahead of me. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. The, the hardest one that I'm struggling with is I'm dealing with me. And y'all don't know that I'm still struggling with my personal issue. Yeah, I use my gift to camouflage it. But the truth is, when I go home in private, I'm dealing with my personal issue. You got to call out you. Yeah, sometimes the hardest battles you fight will be with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to deal with that piece of you that nobody knows about except you. You got to look at yourself and say, I die daily. You got to say, flesh, you got to die. In the name of Jesus, get out of here. You got to deal it and kill that flesh. I got to crucify my flesh. I die daily. 
Now, this is the hardest battle because it's now just me and God. The first time I was asked, what is your name? By my earthly father. I lied and I said my name was Esau. But now that I'm wrestling with God, my heavenly father, it ain't, it ain't no benefit to lie because he knows who I am. <sighs> when my heavenly father asked me who I was, I had to tell him my name is Jacob. My name is deceiver. My name is trickster. My name is liar. My name is manipulator. The Bible says that he wrestled all night long. He wrestled all night long. You can't quit this time. You got to fight for your identity. You got to fight for who God called you to be. You got to fight for your future. Your, your kids are counting on you. You got to fight. Your, your family is counting on you. Your, your, your destiny is counting on you. Your grandchildren are counting on you. He, he, he fought. He fought. And, and he, he got tired. He got tired. He got tired. And, and the angel said, let me go. And threw his hip out of socket and he said, I won't let go. I won't let go. I won't let go. This reminds me of the fight that Jesus had with the Father in the Garden of Gethsemane. When he wrestled all night until sweat like great drops of blood fell from his head. And he declared, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. My limp is my testimony. <laughs> my limp is truth that I've been in a fight. My limp is proof that I went to hell and back. Don't be ashamed of your limp. My limp is proof that if God be for me, he's more than the world against me. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Victory. My name is Survivor. My name is Debt Free. My name is Spirit Filled. My name is Love. My name is Joy. My name is Peace. My name is Righteousness. My name is Self Control. My name is Legacy Carrier. My name is Generational Curse Breaker. He changed his name from Jacob Deceiver to Israel. I need you to type in the chat my issue ain't my identity. Mm -mm. My issue ain't my identity. Lonely is what I am, but lonely is not who I am. Depression is what I am, but it's not who I am. Broke is what I am, but it's not who I am. I am who God says that I am. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath. I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed coming out. Allow me to introduce myself. I walk different. I, I talk different. I respond different. I move different. The old folks used to sing a song that says a wonderful change has come over me. God prophesied from the beginning that abundance was coming to me. God prophesied from the beginning that the elder was going to serve the younger. The question isn't if God's word is going to come true. The question is Will the real you be present and show up when it happens? <sighs> no more Jacob. My name is Israel. Don't call me by who I used to be. Call me by my name, Israel. You are not what they call you. You are who you respond to. I need you to type in the chat, what's your new name? <laughs> I need you all over to type in the chat, what's your new name? For everybody who types in the chat, I need you to affirm them and say, nice to meet you. <sighs> Allow me to reintroduce myself. If I'm going to reintroduce myself, I got to repent. I got to make a U-turn. Sin took me to a whole nother place I didn't plan on being. After I repent, God got to remind me of the promise. And 
and then I got to make a decision to reinvent myself. I thought that was me. I thought that was me. I thought that was me. Those were versions of me. I am Israel. And if any of these pieces try to get back up, I got to remember that he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the God over the parts of me that tried to get me out of my blessing. Rock Church, everybody who's watching, if you've been in a fight, if you feel like all my life I had to fight, this battle's worth fighting for. I got to fight for my future. I got to fight to become everything that God called me to be. Repent. Baptism in Jesus' name. Wash away the old version of me. I need a new name. And fill me with the power of the Holy Spirit. I need you to text salvation to 925-233-0174. We will baptize you in Jesus' name. God will fill you with the power of the Holy Spirit. You need a church home. Text GROW, 925-233-0174. The Rock Church, our arms are open. What God is doing for and through the Rock Church family is unprecedented. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. Neither has it entered the heart of men what God has prepared for those who love him. We got live prayer right now. Click the link in the chat. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every Jacob who's getting a name change. God, I thank you for every Jacob who's fought with their past, who's fought with external opposition, who's fought with internal opposition, and who's wrestled with their future. God, I pray, Lord, that they will come out victorious. Never let them be the same. In Jesus' name. Rock Church family, I need y'all to go crazy for every new member. I need you to go crazy for every soul that's deciding to be baptized in Jesus' name, to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen, if you didn't have an opportunity to give, I need you to text TRCBA to 77977. Honor God with your tithe. Honor God with your offering. And after worship, I need you to hang out with us and rock a recap. It's going to be incredible. Last but not least, 3 o'clock today, YLC TV. I need y'all to help me. I literally need you to set a reminder. 3 o'clock, I'm jumping on. I'm going to click the share button. It's your giving that allows us to be on platforms such as YLC TV. And next week, we jumping into a new series. Summer School, Relearning Christ. You know what? A picture is worth a thousand words. Check this promo out. God bless us, protect us, in Jesus' name, amen. Greetings. Welcome to Tradition University. Here at TU, we put tradition above the leading of the Holy Spirit. Now, of course we love God, but here we put a bigger focus on what to wear, where to sit, and how to shout that we lose sight of what God intended all together. Let me show you around. Ah, <sighs> yes, and as you can see here, this is our public appearance classroom. Because after all, man looks from the outward appearance and that's who we aim to please. Don't you just love our instructors? Good morning, class. Good morning, Professor Barry. Time for a little pop quiz, if you will. <laughs> now, let's say somebody asks you to honor God with your tithe or to bless somebody else. What are you going to do? Keep it from your heart. Oh, excellent, excellent. Or let's say you're leaving the church and somebody cuts you off on the freeway. What are we going to do? Cuss them out. Cuss Cuss them out. Oh, the finger, excellent, excellent. Or let's say it's a Sunday service and somebody walks in that doesn't look like us. What are we going to do? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Give them the boot, kick them out of our church. Because as you all know, at Tradition University, our mission is tradition. We talk it, but we don't walk it. Oh, give God a praise right there. Wait a second. Wait a second. What's going on up in here? What are you... Tradition University Excuse is closed me? for good. If you're tired of religion without a relationship, 
and you need to come on over to summer school at the Rock Church. We're relearning Christ. Let's get out of here. Wait, where are you all going? Class is not dismissed. Get out of here. Where are you all going? Like, get back here at once. Class is. Hey, excuse me, Professor. What are you? 